Hello there good people, how's it going? My name is Marco, welcome to my channel. The project for today is something special. All these projects by the way are coming from the article online, you'll find the, the link in the description. And for this week it turns out to be rock, paper, scissors. Now to be honest, when I read this I wasn't very excited either. Because let's face it, it's not very interesting. It's not a very interesting project. But if you, like me, are a big Ben Theory fan until season 8, you might have thought of this. I'll tell you what, how about we go rock, paper, scissors? Ew, well, I don't think so. No. Anecdotal evidence suggests that in a game of rock, paper, scissors, players familiar with each other will tie 75 to 80% of the time due to the limited number of outcomes. Hmm. Well, that is a big claim. So, you know what? For today, I'm gonna try and prove Sheldon Cooper wrong. So, the challenge is on. Let's start coding. Okay, after creating the file and, as always, importing the random module, I start creating my player class. I provide a global variable of the available moves and also a set of rules because it might become relevant afterwards. In the init, I just provide a name so that I know which one is which among the players. Then, very easy, I produce a pick method that just returns a random choice among the available moves. Now, what I need is a method outside the class that checks who is winning, so I just set the basic rules. Last, let's try and play. After creating the two player objects, I let them pick a random move and with a good old if statement, I check whether it's a tie or somebody won. A simple run should tell me. And it works. Pretty simple, huh? Now, in the video, Sheldon Cooper points at something very important, which is the fact that there is a very high percentage of ties. He says 75 to 80%. To discover that, I need to have my players to play as many games as possible so that I have a, you know, a reliable sample, a large enough sample. So, to make things easier, I'll just provide a test, very basic test to create this large sample. As I said, the test is very easy. It takes two players and a number of rounds. In a for loop, I create a number of games where the two players pick a move and a score is kept. In the end, I just print the result in a pretty formatted way so that I have the percentages. So let's see what comes out of this. So this is the result for 100 games, 100 iteration. And I'd say it's pretty balanced. Let's try it again. 34, 38. 34, 38 again. Well, yes, it's changing a little bit, but it's always around that 30% uh, range, I'd say. So yeah, on average, I'd say 30%. Well, to be honest, I don't know what I was expecting because after all, my players are basically mathematical equations, so they just use randomness, and there are three possible moves, three possible outcomes, so it's only fair that I only get, yes, one third, so 30% all the time. If anything, it tells me that the behavior is really random, which is, yeah, if you had any doubt. But there is something missing, and I think Sheldon Cooper can help me here. Let's watch it again. I'll tell you what, how about we go rock, paper, scissors? Ew, well, I don't think so. No. Anecdotal evidence suggests that in a game of rock, paper, scissors, players familiar with each other will tie 75 to 80% of the time due to the limited number of outcomes. Did you, did you hear that? Did you, did you catch that? He said players familiar with each other. Now, I'm not really sure how to define acquaintance among players, among computers, but I have an idea. Apparently, the thing that is causing the issue here is randomness. I want to get rid of it. I want the player to have some logic, to think about the next move. In order to do so, 
I came up with this. I give the player a memory, which is just a list. In the beginning, it's just an empty list. And to simulate a human brain, it would keep a record of the last 10 moves the opponent played. It's, it's believable. 10 moves, it's believable. If it were me, I could not remember the last five, but anyways, 10 moves is believable. Now, when I have a full memory, the decision will not be picked randomly, but it would be a deliberate choice of the move that could be more effective. How? Well, I just use probability. First, I count how many times a move has come out in the last 10. Then I'll have the one that came out the least. That is gonna be my perfect candidate. What do I mean with that? Well, if I have four rocks and four papers coming out in the last 10, I know that the next move might be scissors because it's the least frequent. So what I'll do, I'll pick the move that beats scissors, namely rock. I guess it is easier to look at the code than actually talking about it. As I said, I'll provide a memory that is an empty list at first. Then via a remember function, I will start populating the memory. And when the size has reached 10, 10 items, I'll just remove the first element and append the new one. This type of logic is called first in, first out. Then I need to count the memory. Easy peasy. Using the get function, I'll have a counter object with move and the number of times. Out of this count, I have to calculate the most probable next move. So first of all, I have to process the count because sometimes not all moves will be present and I need to account for that. The get method will return the value it finds or the default I specify in the second argument. In this case, I provided 0.08, which is smaller than the smallest possible one in the memory, which is 0.1, meaning 1 tenth. Then to have a net sum of 1, I divide by 10. Now, you might wonder, how could that pick the lowest? You'll have the highest. Well, it is pretty easy to pick the lowest from a high number. I just subtract 1, so that what I have is the remainder, let's say. So something with a very low 0.2, now has a 0.8 score. Lastly, I predict what to do. Because now that I know what the most probable next move is, I can just pick the move that beats it. This should theoretically get rid of randomness after the first 10 games when the memory is full. Once again, I wrote a simple test, but this time I will introduce this new logic uh, to the game and see what happens, see what comes out of it. So the test hasn't changed much. I just wait for uh, 10 iteration so that the memory is full. Each iteration the player remembers the opponent's move and the rest is magic. The first try I'll just give this ability to one player and see what happens. So I'll just comment this out. And just try. Let's try and see what happens. 35%, 32%. Well, let's try again. 35, 31, 34. Well, I think it hasn't changed much. Uh, thinking about it, it is quite obvious because now player one doesn't follow a random pattern. That is true. But player two does. And player one follows player two. So it is, it kind of transfers that logic. So let's try with both players trying to predict each other. So they are going to play and try and guess what the other one is going to do. So here I'll let the even player two and see what changes. 4%. Well, this is disappointing. Let's try it again. 88%. Wow. Well, let's try it again. This is odd. 89% of die. This is fascinating. 3%. 91%. Wow, this is amazing. I guess it's a hit or miss, which is interesting. Even though sometimes, I guess the, the, the percentages of ties is quite high. It's way above 80%. Let's try it again. It's 5%. Yes, it's a hit or miss. 
1% amazing. 93%. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, in a way, I guess Sheldon Cooper was right. I mean, these numbers are very high. Are very high. Okay, so I guess I was able to successfully create some sort of knowledge between the two players. And now it has come the fun part because Sheldon Cooper has a solution to this. I suggest rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. <laughs> what? It's very simple. Look, scissors cuts paper, paper covers rock. Rock crushes lizard, lizard poisons Spock. Spock smashes scissors, scissors decapitates lizard, lizard eats paper, paper disproves Spock, Spock vaporizes rock, and as it always has, rock crushes scissors. Oh, well, uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's repeat it, okay? Let's use a graphical aid, might be easier. Okay, so the rules are as follows. Scissors cuts paper, paper covers rock. Rock crushes lizard. Lizard poisons Spock. Spock smashes scissors. Scissors decapitates lizard. Lizard eats paper. Paper disproves Spock. Spock vaporizes rock. And rock crushes scissors. Well, I'd say that the implementation of this is not that hard. I just need to change the winner function for these new rules and then add something to the player class. Let's see. The logic here is identical as before, but I have two more cases now. Boolean logic here will help. The OR statement will be executed first, so that counts as one element, which is either true or false. Super easy. And then it goes against the AND, the other part of the statement. What do I need to change here? Well, the rules first. There's a new set, and I'll put it in a, in a list. Then, the calculate method now need to process the two new moves. And last but not least, the prediction will receive the next move as a list. And out of that list, it will pick a random move that will surely be the most probable next move. Okay, so for this one I'll have a test as well, which is identical to the ones before. So I have the player that after the 10th iteration used the predict method, so it's not going to be random anymore. Let's see what happens. Let's see. And it's a 44% tie. Well, that's fine. 13%. Well, that's fascinating. It really dropped down, eh? Well, this, I mean, the average, yeah, it should be around 30%, 35% maybe. But the important thing is that it is dramatically less than what I had before with just three moves. It was way above 80 percent wow well i guess sheldon cooper was really right because after all the game with five moves dropped drastically the chance of a tie i mean it went from yeah, around 80 percent to now 40 percent however i want to give this a last test a final test i want to confront the stats for a normal game and for this new hyper advanced game so I will test it a hundred times and each time I will play a hundred games. So in the end, eventually, I would have approximately 10,000 games. So that is a large enough sample to make, you know, a reliable statistics, let's say. Okay, in this last one, I'll have the normal player, someone who can choose among three possible moves, so rock, papers and scissors, and the super player, let's say, with five possible moves. They both are able to predict the opponent's move, so we should see some pretty interesting and undeniable results. Let's see what comes out. Alright, okay, well, this is quite fascinating, because in 10,000 games, remember this is a test of like 10,000 games, so the chances in a normal game, so rock, paper, scissors, of a tie, 70% whereas in the rock paper scissor lizard Spock it's actually very low I mean it's lower than 50% let's try it again and see if this is consistent it's 74 and this is 48 it's kind of stuck at 48 who knows why 49 73 
So the normal game is always above 70%, so it's always very high. Even if uh, before it was a hit or miss, the average is always very high. It's, it is exactly as uh, Sheldon Cooper said, so I guess he was right. Okay, well, I hope that you had as much fun as I did. The lesson here, I think, is to never doubt Sheldon Cooper again. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe for more content. As always, stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.